Welcome back everyone, in today's video I wanted to share my thoughts after watching the latest Hasbro Pulse fan stream. There were a number of great reveals for the vintage collection, and overall I think we had a decent day. Yes, there could always be more, and we should continue to let Hasbro know that we want to see more volume and more newness. More newly tooled main characters from all media, OT, PT, animation, and even sequels. So be sure to leave old yet constructive feedback in the comments down below. But moving on, the Star Wars team kicked off the stream by showing off some of the previous reveals, the Phase 2 Clone Trooper Pack and the Deluxe Jango Fett. These are part of the 25th anniversary celebration of The Phantom Menace, which kicked off the prequel trilogy as a whole. The Clone Trooper Pack is wonderful, but I know many fans were let down by the number of accessories that were included with Jango, and I would have to agree that the Poncho and Secondary Jetpack should have been included with this quote-unquote deluxe figure. Regardless, both of these are a nice addition to the line and I hope we see more newly tooled prequel trilogy characters this year. Our first reveal for the day was Captain Rex on a Bad Batch card, using the wonderful new clone body. I've gotta say that it's a relief to finally have a definitive version of Captain Rex in the Vintage Collection, but it's starting to become extremely frustrating that we only have one member of Clone Force 99 on a Bad Batch card. Hasbro, please send assistance. Hunter is all alone and needs backup ASAP. With all that said, Rex looks great. He has the soft goods comma, his signature pauldron, and I'm happy to see a sculpted helmet with a working rangefinder in place of the plastic removable versions. All of the paint apps look spot on and I think it was a nice touch to add the scar from his inhibitor chip removal and it ties in well with the card art image, which is from the episode where he leads the team to a Republic warship to remove their chips as well. Well done Hasbro, I am really looking forward to this one. Moving on, we have Luke Skywalker X-Wing Pilot, which is a nice repack and I think many fans are happy to see. While the figure has no upgrades to note, the card back has been redesigned with the warning label in the bottom right corner, which looks worlds better and makes me eager to see more Star Wars racetrack releases such as Princess Leia and future updates to the main characters. For the most part, this is a really nice figure despite the slightly older ball jointed hips and lack of rocker ankles, and has me curious if Hasbro is considering releasing a Rebel Pilot 4-pack sometime soon, while this tooling is in factory use. I think that would be a great release for the vintage collection, but either way I'm happy to see X-Wing Luke and I will probably pick up a few for custom pilots. Next up we have Axwo's Privateer from Season 3 of The Mandalorian, who continues to be a bit of an upset for the vintage collection. Don't get me wrong, this is a fantastic figure in general, but Hasbro dropped the ball on this release as the style of the chest armor changed in Season 3. The first release of this figure sports the Death Watch chest plate, which was accurate, but note the standard Boba style armor that's clearly seen on the card back image. This was just a bit puzzling as Hasbro has the tooling and even implemented it on the next reveal, the Mandalorian Fleet Commander. While the armor is a bit of a shame, I will give Hasbro some credit for updating the helmet to a properly sized swappable version. The previous Target exclusive was not received well, so this is a nice update to see. But updating the armor as well would have made this feel like a proper new release. And as I mentioned, our next reveal was the Mandalorian Fleet Commander, who actually sports some decent new tooling and looks superb in my opinion. It looks like Hasbro opted to sculpt new shin and thigh armor that is accurate to the source material, which is always nice to see. Additionally, the figure comes with a proper sized helmet that is swappable, and new style jetpack with the updated shorter rocket on the top. All in all, I think the figure looks superb, and I'm excited for this Vintage Collection release, although I have to point out that the character does not have a holster for some reason, which is accurate to the show, but a bit odd for a Mandalorian warrior. Speaking of Mandalorian warriors, the next reveal was a mainline carded release of Din Djarin on a Season 3 Mines of Mandalore card back. This looks like a street repack of the figure that was included with the N1, which is nice for anyone who did not want to open up that figure, as you will get the Vibro Blade that was previously exclusive to that vehicle release. Although, it has to be said that it would have been nice to see a new accessory for this version of the Mandalorian, perhaps an unlit darksaber hilt or the crystallized rock with the inscription that he presented to the armor early in the series. That would have definitely been cool to see. I will say that I'm a little disappointed that this figure itself has no meaningful updates. This character would still benefit from new style barbell hips, a boot sheath for the blade, and lastly, soft plastic shoulder armor similar to Paz Vizsla that would allow for greater range of motion. This is definitely something Hasbro needs to consider for the future, but all in all, I'm happy to pick up more soft good capes for my Mandalorian figures. Moving on, we have another character from Season 3 of The Mandalorian who we are very familiar with at this point. 
Grogu with an updated Pram. This is the 10th version of this character in the Vintage Collection, believe it or not. I think it's safe to say we will have a grand clone army of Grogu's one day soon, but it's nice to see a third version of his Pram make its way into the line. The paint apps look great, and the multiple Pram libs are a nice touch. I will say that the Beskar shirt seems like an odd extra that was included, and I would have personally liked to see his circular armor with the Mudhorn signet. This was gifted to him by the armor while he was with the Covert, and would have tied everything together with the card back image. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. For the most part, this was a decent offering and these figures will be part of the main line, which goes up for pre-order starting tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Time and will be available summer of 24. Moving on, the team wanted to give us an update on the final members needed to complete the Ghost Crew for our successful HasLab campaign, Chopper and Sabine, who will be released as a special action figure 2-pack. I was very happy to finally see these two characters brought to life in the Vintage Collection, and both the mural card backs and action figures look spectacular. I have got to give Hasbro some credit for packing these two with plenty of accessories, and the two Loath Cats were a very welcome surprise. Sabine appears to be mostly all new from the ground up and sports a hefty splatter of paint applications that are worthy of recognition and praise. She comes with a properly sized helmet, nicely sculpted hair, a gauntlet shield, jetpack, flame accessory, and pistols. I am really looking forward to posing this figure and adding her to my ghost display. Her counterpart, Chopper, looks to be a repaint of the Vintage Collection release for the Ahsoka series, but is packed with repaints of the Loath Cat from the Deluxe Sabine figure. While there's not much to say here, I do think Chopper looks good with his Rebels paint deco, but I really would have liked to see his rocket accessory included with this release. He uses it a number of times in the Rebel series, and it would have been a smart accessory to pack in. Both Chopper and Sabine will go for pre-order, but it's going to be a limited window. Pre-orders will close on February 14th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, and then they will be available for fall of 24. And lastly, we have the pipelines, which include Ahsoka's droids from Season 7 of The Clone Wars, who I am very excited to add to my shelf display. I never thought we would see these little guys make their way into the Vintage Collection, and they will help complete the Order 66 scenes from the end of Season 7. Moving on, we have the HK-87 droids repainted with the tan color scheme, a repack of the Dark Trooper on a card back, Ahsoka the White from the recent series, the Mandalorian with Super Commando Jetpack from Season 3, Bo-Katan with her Mythosaur pauldron, and at last, Cobb Vanth from Season 2 of The Mandalorian, who along with Ahsoka is a great pipeline to see in the Vintage Collection, and long overdue. All in all, I think today was a fairly good day for the Vintage Collection. We got a decent amount of figures, although besides Sabine and some of the pipelines, much of it was partial retools and repaints. We still need to see characters like Balin, Shin, Clone Force 99, and much more. But feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Did you enjoy the reveals from today's Hasbro Pulse fan stream? What was your favorite reveal? And don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It really helps and is always greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone and may the force be with you.